You plug in and use electricity every single day, but do you know where it comes from or how it's made? Sure, you may have heard of a generator before, but what exactly is a generator and how does it generate electricity? I'm George, I'm a middle school science teacher, and if you give me just three minutes of your time, I'll tell you. In a different video, I explained what electricity actually is, and I totally think you should check that one out. But for now, I'll just refresh you on the basics. In an atom, electrons are held in orbit around a nucleus due to electromagnetic charge differences. But since they're not directly attached to the nucleus, they can be kicked out of their orbitals and move, bringing their charge with them. This movement of electrons is what we call electricity. So the question now is, how do we get these electrons to move for us? Well, since ancient times, humans have studied lightning and static electricity, and they thought it was all pretty magical. But it wasn't until the 1700s that someone actually figured out how to generate it. And as it turns out, electricity isn't even that hard to make. All you need is a magnet and some metal. See, magnets have a force field around them. Which, admittedly, sounds kind of crazy. But it really just means that they can exert forces on objects that come within a certain range of them. And if that object is metal, then it can create electricity. As I said earlier, nuclei of atoms hold electrons in orbit, and electricity happens when those electrons are kicked out of that orbit. Metal nuclei are really bad at holding onto the electrons that float around them. In fact, they're so bad at holding onto their electrons that the force of a magnetic field is enough to knock the electrons out of their orbitals and into other atoms. This imbalance of the electrons causes a domino effect in the surrounding atoms, causing their electrons to move. This directional flow of electrons through atoms is called electrical current, and this will happen anytime you move metal through a magnetic field. By cutting the metal into wires, we can guide the electrons, forcing them to go in the direction we want them to. Ta -da! It's similar to modern plumbing and water. We don't need to live right next to a well or a lake to have access to water. Pipes connect water supplies to buildings and homes, allowing water to use its nature to flow where we need it to. But just like pumps need to be constantly active to keep up the pressure necessary to move water, some part of the metal needs to continually move through a magnetic field in order to keep the electricity flowing. To do this, engineers quickly realized that rotation is key because you can move a wire through a magnetic field indefinitely if you rotate it around even a tiny magnet. In fact, this fully functioning electrical generator can fit into the palm of my hand. When we open it up, we can see that the wire is wrapped in numerous spools around a central magnet. When I spin this rotor, the wires move through the magnetic field and that causes the electrons to begin to flow, which we can see evidence of in the lighting of this LED. The thing about this generator though, is that lighting an LED is just about all it can do. When it comes to electrical generation, size matters. While this palm-sized electrical generator only produces a little bit of energy, all it takes to generate more is to coil more wires around a larger magnet. And from an engineering perspective, doing so isn't all that complicated. So the only difference between the generator in my hand and the generator in this power plant is that the one in the power plant is a heck of a lot bigger. The real engineering question, however, is how to keep the generator spinning. You'll notice that electrical current only flows while the generator is spinning in my hand. As soon as I stop actively turning it, the electrons no longer flow. So, in order to keep people's refrigerators running, we need to keep the generators spinning. And the bigger the generator, the more energy it will take to do this. To recap, you learned that electricity is what happens when electrons are knocked out of their orbits and moved to other atoms. This is achieved in a generator by moving wires through a magnetic field, which is best done through rotation. More wires and larger magnets create more electricity, so powering a city means scaling up. Now you know the basics of electrical generation, and if you give me just three more minutes of your time, I'll explain how different power plants use different methods to keep their generators running.